last match was a shutout. It was 0-9. to nine. They didn't really get a single score uh, up on the scoreboard, and it was difficult to deal with that. So going into this, let's look at the lineup again. It looks like TPG has elected not to adjust much here. They're going to run Ruckus, Barrick, Cassie, Sky, and then Knessa once again. Across the way, we do see District 69 running a very similar comp. It's the exact same comp here. But again, look at Elvin Path on that Fernando. He didn't pick up. You see that, that yellow boot icon next to his name. He picked up the two utility burn card, Nimble, which allows him to move faster. And really, his only job this game is to find Sky and Knessa and burn them. And shut them down. Knessa does have a couple of high ground advantage points that she can kind of sit there, but we saw a little red icon on the right-hand side go around looking for flank on the Knessa. There's Spunk in the backside, but spotted out by a turret and a lot of trouble. Forced away, able to go into him, mount up and run for a second, but they're sticking around, maybe getting the flank on the backside. See that surprise attack damage as well come out, doing a lot of burst. That's actually first blood in favor of Torpedo. Wow, they're able to pick up that kill there on Androx. That was a great pickup. They're actually holding the point now. Or no, actually, District 69 is getting progress on the point. Now to Princess is setting back up as Barrick with that shield there. Elven Path looking for Sky, can't find her. I love the fact that Spunky's playing it safe now. He's not being as aggressive. He's waiting for Fernando to waste his time looking for her. While it's a four versus four, I think in that four versus four, four matchup, especially on this point with Knessa in the back, they've got a lot of artillery. Exactly. Now, Knessa doesn't have the best line of sight coming onto this middle point, but she has the best vantage point up on the high ground for actually taking players out and not... Uh, oh, wow, wow. Theo. That roll shot was perfect by Thiel. Yeah, hold that thought as Thiel as well with the kill to heal card. Uh, looks like he picks up a little bit of extra health, able to stay alive. See Lazy there now actually being quite aggressive. Drops oh, down a mind revealing this is a enemies. Pick. This is a pick. Watch this. Spunky coming out of nowhere. Looking for the kill. He's going to dash away as far as he can. We'll get that disengaged. Of course, nope. There goes Spunky picking him off in the back. Cass is going to try and force the Pip back further. Of course, as Pip is doing AoE damage, he's forcing his own team off the point. 90% for TPG. District 9 gets closer to the point. Nice knockback from Cassie there. Custom picking up a kill onto Bugsy there, looking to take this one back. We do have Jera the Barrack on the side of District 69 holding now that, that objective. And whilst Torpedo, they held the point for a long time. Now there's a double shield on that objective point. It's going to be very, very difficult to, for Torpedo to break the way through. We may even see Immortal up and available. A curse down from the backside might come out as well. And there we go. Perto picks up one kill, but Spunky answers back with a kill onto Jera. No more Barrack for you. The Princess picks up Elven, Elven Path. And this first objective is going to Torpedo. Two points to zero. They lead. They're looking to answer back. TPG is back on the board. 2 0. They got a payload cart coming along here. And I love the fact that Spunky has elected to just stay oh, at wow. it. Go for the damage. There goes Bugsy again. And, that, you know, I love it because Spunky said, okay, I know Sky. We know Sky works. This assassination is working. We just have to wait for Elven Path to miss us. Right. If I sit back long enough and I wait for Elven Path on Fernando to take a different route or get too far away, I can find a squishy target by themselves and I will win that matchup. And so he's just being a little bit more patient. There goes Perto down again. Spunky will lose his life here, but he's forcing almost half the team of District Design off of the payload cart. They're already at the front gate. Oh, Dragon Bunch actually. Bugsy comes from the backside after wiping out Spunky. Does pick up Theo with that one shot. Is it a triple? Is it a triple? No, he's not going to find Elven Path. We'll find, we'll find that flank. Custom 3 will pick up Jera in the process. And again, they're at the front gate looking for something, but it looks like TPG has has to reset. Exifier available for custom, we can see here. Gonna be looking to move into position, maybe wipe out the Fernando with that. Now reversal's burn, this is the perfect time to Whoa. pop it. One big counter to that Hexafire ultimate on the side of Ruckus is, of course, Androx's reversal ability. He can jump straight in front of that line of fire, absorb all that damage, and then shoot it back for massive amounts in Ruckus's face. So, gotta be careful of that. Now Bugs are respawning. Expectorate explosion hits two, knocking them up. Feel wiped out by a mega turret from Jera there. Jera picking up a double kill, looking for the triple kill, maybe. No. And he's too far on this one. The expectory around the corner actually knocks up custom as well, keeping them at bay. Torpedo, if they're going to push this one through, it's going to come down to good ultimate coordination, good poke from the Knessa, as well as uh, going in as a group, waiting for those respawns to come through. Now, of course, the fire spit from Drogos. If you hit it with your own rocket, it will knock all targets back there. And that's exactly what he's looking for. He's actually able to scatter the enemy team. Looks like Lazy's looking for some kind of shot here. Um, trying to find some damage, forcing him back. Uh, there goes the push. It looks like Thiel, again, getting a little bit too far away, but looking for the Androxus might find it into the enemy base he goes, or into his own base he goes, uh, backing off. Then at this point, they're at kind of a crossroads. 30 seconds left. They're getting closer to the base, but they really need to get a strong pick here. Oh, there we go. We can see Perto on this. Androx is looking to drop some damage to the Lazy. Oh, Spunky, very low. Eliminated, going for the second shot. Dashes in, grabs the health nugget. Looking to pick up some more health. There's Lazy, caught out. Nice Double pick. kill for Perto. Possibly a triple oh. kill here. Oh, nice roll. Immunity there well, from the reversal from Androxus. Field will take him down with the help of Custom 3 on Ruckus. Ten seconds left. If they touch the payload cart, remember, it will go into overtime. As long as there's still an attacker on the payload cart, it will trigger overtime. Will they go for it? They're getting closer and closer. Zero will hit the mark. Defense failed. And now it's 2-1 to one in favor of TPG. You know what? I think that's a better decision for... Uh, for 
of Torpedo, right? So if they wanted to push that payload through, they'd have to use valuable ultimates. Whether, whereas now, even though they do drop a point and District 69 do get themselves on the board, yes. they're able to retain that ultimate charge for the next capture point, not wiped out between rounds unless you change your deck or your loadout, rather. And as a result, we're going to see that Toxic Time Bomb come out. I think that Hexafire is still available on the side of Custom. So if Custom gets a good flank up, gets into a great position, he can dish out massive damage to the backside of District 69. They could be in a lot of trouble. Once again, we're going to be picking up Spunky on Sky, going to follow them deep into the backside. Actually, no, waiting in a push out, as we have seen previously. Loaded up on burn cards. They're ready to go. They spent a lot of their credits here. Going to the spot, nice time bomb, but there's a lot of line of sights in there. I doubt that's going to hit. Looks like it just did land on Varric. Fernando will take a lot of hits there, forced to use his immortal ultimate to save his teammates from certain death. Feel looking for a flank on the right side. He's down to half health, so he's got to be careful how he approaches here. Nice pickup by Spunky yet again. Finding Bugsy, it's a big pickup. They're going to turn on Fernando here, two versus one. He's going to drop low, use the charge to get back into the crosswind, and he will fall to Spunky. That's two kills so far. Perdo and Jera will pick up a kill themselves, and of course, on the point, progress is being made for TPG. Most importantly now, there is a barrack on the side of D69. You can see that barricade go down, saving Jero at the last moment there. Jero very low, possibly wiped out by Sky there. No, the rifle shot connects. Spunky eliminated in District 69. Starting to take this one back in their favor. You've got to be careful of custom now. As look at that Hexa, not nice the Hexa fire, the dual fire damage just coming out, eliminating Perda right there. Under all the fire, has to back off, has to look to heal up again now. But the push is going to come back through from Torpedo. Androxus has three dashes available to him, so he's very mobile. So what we saw there coming out from the Ruckus play is waiting for those dashes to be down and then caught him by himself and Darks had nowhere to go. Exactly. Damage coming out here from Pip. The rotation will come through. Somebody's Dragon Punch is coming through around the tree. Can't find the hit. It's going to come from behind potentially. The shield is up. A lot of damage. Mega turret is shredding through the targets and it looks like the capture will be District 69. It's 3 to 2 and now they have a payload push. But there is equalization. Uh, well, there's a point for equalization here. If Torpedo do get the defense off, they do have that Kinesa. They've got the high ground advance, which we talked about previously. But you've got two champions with air control on the side of District 69. You have Drogos and you have Androx. So you can get Ooh. up on that little ledge, start to drop damage through. And that's exactly what they're doing right now, making it very difficult for Torpedo just to kind of set up a defensive position. Damage. Gonna be ready to go here. We do have the Androx ultimate. Spunky's gonna find him right on the right side. Not able to use that ultimate. Spunky's getting so good at catching these players off guard. One minute, 50 seconds left on this payload push. Elven Path is gonna be driving this one home. And as they set up here, they're gonna have to get through to Princess first. Somebody has to stop the payload there. Actually, Sky on the backside gonna access the distraction. Is hit. Probably gonna be charged after here. Goes into hidden, is able to escape. Elven Path's gonna have to give that one up. There's a little bit of area damage, a little bit of splash damage starts to drop down. Mounting up, we're gonna regenerate health whilst out of combat and head back to the payload. Going to start enforcing it forwards a little bit further. Got a turret set up, though, uh, by Torpedo Gaming. That's going to keep them safe for a little while. And once again, Spunk on the backside now under a lot of fire. Likely to fall here. As look at all of that burning coming Oh, he hit overheat. He's reloading his weapon here. He's going to find Sky. Jumps over the rock. Didn't actually catch her as she went upwards. Elven Path did not expect that. Now, again, she is still low. She's going up on the top looking for the time bomb. Going to find uh, actually just one target there. Uh, Perdo will drop Spunky. Spunky, in the meantime, did pick up Sheepo with that time bomb ultimate. That poison was strong enough feel hit in the face they're pushing in they could actually get the score here the princess the only one with size torpedo left in testing this we're gonna have to have someone drop down even if it's a Knesset just to get bodies on the point just to get that from pushing through don't know about the ultimate charges I haven't seen the princess use that mega turret yet so far they're probably reluctant to use it unless it comes out to a, a do or die situation lazy picks up Perdo again that's no more Androxus for you 37 seconds left on the push oh. however so that's plenty of time for the respawns to come through and the regroup on the side of district 69 one last shot Shot at pushing this one through to completion. Spunky just got some much needed revenge there by taking out Elven Path and Fernando. That Fernando has been on his tail all game long. They're getting closer here. 20 seconds on the clock. D69 is going to cross the threshold. That threshold is so hard to get all the way through when you're going under the bridge. There goes Spunky to fall to Jera. Uh, here comes the ultimate, but blocked by the barrack shield the second he saw it. He's got one more shot to go, but he's going to time out. Look at that preemptive reaction right there. As soon as you see Androxus take three dashes straight up into the egg, you know they're going to be going for that ultimate. Now Feel on, on this cast is going to look for the defense. The push is coming through. That's a mega turret coming out of the side of District 69. That's a lot of damage, but actually it only fires if they're in line of sight and round the corners they go, hiding out. There's Jera Wipes out by custom. The payload push, there's only Last actually Elven Path standing. left. Nice Overtime time. four, three, two, one. They are too far away to stop this. And it looks like the def defense will fail. We're tied three to three. This so far has become the even match we were looking for. 
this is a much closer game than any we've seen previously. Now, Torpedo, if they want to get their way back into this, if they want to keep the ball rolling and go to a game four, they're going to have to pull out all the stops to make sure that they don't drop a single capture point. Whilst they can win points off the defenses, if they keep on dropping the capture points, they're going to be in a lot of trouble. We're going to see them advance to the next capture point, spawning in just a moment. Burn cards coming out from all players, heavily favoring that blue card blast shields right there, reducing all damage done over 350 by 25%. Really need it for Androxus and Drogos. Those are the two. Pip will definitely be there, but Pip you can avoid a little bit more than them. Since Androxus and Drogos are so mobile, when you hide behind cover, they're going to chase you down. They're going to find you, and they're going to blow you up. And so you really need those blast shields to keep you safe against those specific targets. As I said up here, this is the Cassie ultimate. They're all revealed. I love that. I love that. What we're seeing a lot of happening at the moment is that Cassie's ultimate scout will be saved at the start of every capture point. It's popped before uh, all the players actually engage on each other, and that reveals all members of the enemy nice. team. Oh, it's not going to matter. Reversal does nothing there. The time bomb was very key. It was risky, but it paid off there. They are able to pick off one on Perdo. Five seconds left. Hexafire going through the shield. They're going to find some damage here onto Drogos. There goes Bug to drop it down. It's already three to five here on the side of Torpe Tor Torpedo Gaming. They're holding the point. They've got the capture. Lazy dealing some damage to that shield. They're going to find Bearcup to get him. This capture point is going to be their area to hold. Nice play from Theo there, picking up a delayed double kill torpedo. Now they have the opportunity to get onto that capture point without the area damage raining down from uh, raining down from all of the blasters on the side. District 69, like Pip, like Drogos, they got a little bit of safety. And look at this scout now, popped by Cassie, revealing the enemy team, enabling District 69 to show up through walls, show up um, in plenty of time advanced, so Torpedo can scout them out, can make sure that they're not coming around behind them for the flank, and they can head them off the pass, dismounting them before they get close to the capture point, just like Thiel is doing there, but Polymorph, he's in a lot of trouble. He's gonna try to hide in the bush, not gonna find it though, 350 health on uh, the Pip Sheepa here. Damage on the point, looks like they're at 98%, they're getting held by District 69, they're gonna force him away. With the loss of Thiel, they lose a lot of damage, Funky will go down as well, Bugsy is on fire here, Sheepa's gonna go back around the point, uh, Custom 3 looking for the damage, down onto Drogo, he's gonna pick up the Drogo, can he find the pip in the meantime? He's pushing him away. They just need to stand on the point for just a moment. 58%, 60%, 62%. District 69 might be able to hold this. They're going for the whole retake now. You've got a Fernando on the point at full health, which you have to deal with. There's no Drogo's one-shot ultimate on the side. There's no that, none of that Dragon Punch ultimate on the side of Torpedo. They got no way back in, and that's actually the next objective. Going to be captured by District 69, now leading five points to three. There goes the push. They're going to set up here smartly by Torpedo Gaming. They know that the area is lost. Spunky's looking for a flank as I say that. He's trying to find a pick here. Uh, of course, with the stealth and the mount, he's able to get out of dodge. Uh, he's in a little bit safer position here. But again, it's up the TPG to really find a nice chokehold, set up a strong defense, and wait for the payload to reach them. Exactly. And really, on this map, Enchanted Forest, that's actually relatively close to the base. You can see Lazy actually dropping some oh, shots there. Oh, the out of air there. snipe by Lazy. Not so Lazy. No, definitely not lazy. And if we take a look at, at all at his carry, you can see that it's very, very rap. He's always keeping an eye out for his team, always spotting out, always making those all-important calls, and able to get those very quick snapshots off, which uh, could change the tide in this in this particular match. Yeah, see, ult is up. Everyone is revealed here for Torpedo Gaming. Damage from Cassie dropping low. Oh, the sniper lazy will keep him alive. Feel getting saved by his teammate there. Megaturn is available for Jera. Uh, looks like Ellen Pad's forced out of the fight, dropping out to half HP. That's a lot of HP lost for Fernando with a maximum of 5,600 with Evolve. It looks like they're trying to regroup here. Spunky looking for a pick, and they're going to find him. Oh, Spunky in a lot of trouble now, though. It's going to be run down. There's Toxic Time Bomb dropped to the last moment, but Jera hides behind. No, Jera actually hit by Toxic Time Bomb. Not enough damage over time to kill him, however. So he'll get out of dodge, able to regen out of combat. Now Lazy under a lot oh. of fire. Hit by the Expectorate. No air shot coming through, but in a lot of trouble now. The, the Spikes might come through, though, off of Lazy, but he's constantly bombarded. There's another Expectorate bashed into the air. He might have a transport available, but it doesn't matter. Sheepa from the backside picks up that kill, and no more Kinesa for you, say District 69, as they begin to push into the base. It will find the in there. Theo will find his way out. They need to hold this. The barrack shield is up. There goes the turret. Into the fight is Elvin Path. They can burn him down for the teammate show up. Dragon Punch will find Custom 3 in his own base. If District takes this, they can go up to seven points with a four-point lead. It looks like they're getting close. Funky trying to hold down. The Immortal is available. Not necessary. And it looks like D69 is up four points. Seven to three in game number three. If they get one more objective, that's the set.
and they will advance to the finals, of course. And again, that's exactly what we talked about previously. you got that tanky front line on the side of District 69 right now with the Fernando with the barricade coming out from Barrack. And there's nobody who can really hold. Yes, you can have Barrack drop down on the side of Torpedo to stop the payload from pushing any further, but he'll just get chased all around the barricade. If you stick a Sky on the point, she's going to be evaporated by all the condensed damage right. there, all the area damage coming out from not just Fernando's Lars, effective at short range, but also Pip and Drogo's as well. Burn cards pretty standard as we head into the market point potentially the final point of this entire or the final objective rather of this entire set he all drops the ultimate gonna be revealing the entire enemy team torpedo really 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 needs to get this objective if they don't capture this they will lose the game so it's all on the line it looks like they're still playing a safe spunky by himself gonna find Perno. there goes oh. the hit alvin path will find him as well spunky will fall but not before taking bugs it's a big pickup a lot of displacement coming out from the fire spit there's megatar actually popped on the side of torpedo they're gonna be keeping the capture point under their control for a little while but look at this, Immortal Pop by Fernando, keeping his team alive. Wiped nice out will chase. be uh, the Princess by Perto. Now going for Cassie as well. Look at all the damage coming through. Versus available, he's going to be able to reflect some of that damage. No dodge roll available, but it doesn't matter. Field going to be able to juke that one out. Lazy back on the backside, going to be the next target for Androxus, possibly. But he's got to stay out of combat for a little while, and this gives Torpedo the chance to advance. Spunky look at the flank, but Perto's going to come by, and there goes Spunky falling yet again. He did pick up Sheepa. It looks like every time he's trading one for one. Um, debatable on whether that's actually working out for him, but here comes the damage to force him off the point. 66%, District 69 is looking closer and closer to the Grand Finals. If there they can't stop this, off. Torpedo Gaming will be dropped out of the entire series. 98, there goes the capture. We are moving to the Grand Finals with C2. District 69, the underdog in this entire series, came out from third seed in the qualifiers, swept Torpedo 3-0, and they're looking like they could be the first champions. I look at them up on stage now, all hugging there. So Kakamitsu as well, the sub for District 69, accompanying them on this trip, congratulating everybody. And absolutely, how can you not? The second seed, the underdog story coming through, going through to the finals with a huge prize pool available to them. You can see the grins on all of their faces and phenomenal play. Great play, and honestly, it, it didn't really seem like they hit a lot of friction until the third match, right? No. The first match was a complete sweep, zero to nine. They're able to bring it down. Here is the post-match uh, scoreboard to see exactly what went down there. Spunky, 17 kills. 14 deaths. So right. he had a lot of trouble playing that Sky. He dealt 48,000 damage across the board. Lazy, 55,000, by far the most in the entire match. But in the end, it didn't matter. They didn't have the core comp that held the objective point safely for their team. Exactly. And whilst the kills are important, if you're squishy and if you get picked off, I mean, it, it, you can get a lot of kills around the edge, but unless you pick off those primary tanks, it doesn't matter. If they're able to just to stall out on the objective point, you can pick off carries all day, but if somebody's just sat there contesting, it doesn't matter. It's all about the most important picks that they really need without that Drogo's ultimate. I feel like uh, I feel like Torpedo really had no answer for Fernando especially. And whilst Canessa was effective at range, when it comes to the defense, it's just a non-factor. Fernando was a great holding point for them. They were able to keep that all together. And, you know, it's really exciting to see the team that really wasn't favored coming into this. You know, obviously, District 69, one of those teams you think, okay, we'll see if they can hold against semifinals or watch Torpedo go in the finals. Not the case. They had the spirit, they had the commitment, and they were able to get into it. So Warpath Gaming versus Soar is coming up next. But before we get to that, we can cut over to the stage to see if we can see what happened in the mines of District 69. Over to you, Rain Day. Thank you, Dry Bear. And what a game, what a finish, what a result. But hey, you guys may not think so because I know you had a lot of confidence going into this. I'm standing with Bugsy, the captain of D69. They'll be moving on from EU to represent that part of the world in the finals of the Paladins Founders Tournament. Bugsy, how are you feeling right now, man? I mean, we feel excited. We uh, practice at, last, at least 20 hours per week. We've put so much work into it and it paid off. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people looked at the way you guys got treated in the qualifiers with Sky, taking a 2-0 lead on Torpedo and actually having that fall to pieces when they picked out this new pick that wasn't really in the meta. You guys weren't looking like you were going to get fooled by that one. It seems like you saw that movie already. How did you feel about addressing Sky in this game? Uh, we've been playing versus different teams and we asked to, for them to play Sky as well. We managed to get a strategy around the Sky to make it completely useless and we just won 3-0 because of it. 
I, I mean, it, it seemed like you had it down. And honestly, the uh, way you guys all played, the thing that I came to me was everybody stepped up. Androxus, Perto on the Androxus was hitting his shots like nobody's business. And Sheepa in the last round stayed alive at 300 health and took down three people. What do you have to say about your teammates and how they performed today? I mean, I'm proud of my teammates. Uh, we definitely got a boost of confidence being at LAN, meeting each other and talking things out. Uh, everyone know how aggressive they can be. And on online play, it was completely different. It's like a completely different team right now. Well, you guys are looking confident. You're looking good. Obviously, the finals are tomorrow, so you all have to stay tuned for that. Are you feeling excited? And do you think you guys can win the whole thing? I think we can win the whole thing. We'll see how it goes tomorrow, though. We need to see the NA games, how both teams perform. All right, well, so do you back at home, and so do we over here. I'll be casting that one with Dry Barrack upcoming next after this quick break, so stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you guys in a bit.